What is up guys? It is time for yet another weekly reset inside of Destiny 2 Season of Arrival. As you can see, the pyramid ships are just everywhere on this map. It's literally ridiculous. We're going to go over all of the powerful rewards, the pinnacle rewards, and see what Eververse has for this week. So, without further ado, let's get into it. For strikes this week, the Singe is void. Void damage increases slightly from all sources. The modifier for today are iron, enemies have more health and are not staggered by damage, and heavyweight, power weapons deal more damage and more ammo is available. These two modifiers will change daily, but the void singe will last the entire week. Completing three strikes will grant you a pinnacle reward. The nightfall this week is in the Echo Mesa. Under the Adept difficulty, we have Empath, taking combatants, generate Blight Geysers when defeated. Completing three of the Nightfalls on the Adept difficulty will grant you a Tier 1 Powerful Reward. For the 100k Nightfall, the modifiers are Empath, Champions Unstoppable. This mode contains Unstoppable Champions, which cannot be stopped without an Unstoppable mod. Champions Overload. This mode contains Overload Champions, which cannot be stopped without an Overload mod. Equipment is locked. You will not be able to change your equipment after this activity starts. Match Game. Enemy Shields are highly resistant to all unmatched elemental damage. And Boris Breach. Void damage increased, knockback damage, and distance increased. Completing this on the Legend difficulty and achieving the 100,000 score will grant you a pinnacle reward. In the classic Nightfall playlist this week, we have the Tree of Probabilities, we have Savathun's Song, and we have the Warden of Nothing. If you need to complete the scores for any of the old school Nightfalls, you can do that this week. In the Crucible this week, starting with the Rotator playlist, we have Momentum Control as well as Showdown. Completing four matches in the Rotator playlist will grant you a Tier 1 Powerful Reward. For the Core playlist, we have Rumble, Control, Elimination, Survival, Survival Freelance, and Classic Mix. Completing four matches in either one of these playlists will grant you a Pinnacle Reward. In the Gambit playlist, as always, you have regular Gambit and Gambit Prime. Completing three matches in either one of these playlists will grant you a pinnacle reward. On the moon, starting from left to right, we have the Garden of Salvation Raid. Completing all four encounters will grant you pinnacle rewards for each encounter. Next up, we have the Nightmare Hunt for the Fanatic. We have the Son of Crota, and we have Omnigul completing the Adept difficulty. Three of these will grant you a tier one powerful reward. If you are going for the 1080 Master, the modifiers are Fire Pit, when defeated, Acolyte spawn fire pools that cause damage over time, Champions Unstoppable, Champions Barrier, Famine, all ammunition drops are significantly reduced. Equipment is locked. Match game is on. Champions mob, this mode contains additional champions. And Torment of Omnigul. Completing the Master Nightmare Hunt will grant you a pinnacle reward. And moving on to the End the Deep campaign mission. Completing this will grant you a tier 1 powerful reward. The Nightmare Slayer Vendor Challenge, once completed, will grant you a Tier 1 Powerful Reward. As well as the Luna's Calling Vendor Challenge, uh, Eris Morn's Memory Quest will grant you a Tier 1 Powerful Reward. Moving up to the Pit of Heresy, completing the two encounters that drop a chest before the boss encounter is a powerful drop for each of those, and defeating the boss at the end will grant you a pinnacle reward. The contact public event for this week is on Titan in the Siren's Watch. Completing two heroic contact public events will grant you a tier 2 powerful reward. In the tower, starting from left to right, we have the means to an end quest. Completing this will grant you a pinnacle reward. 
Next up, we have the Gambit Bounties. Completing eight of these will grant you a tier one powerful reward. We have the Clan Rewards. Getting this to 100% will grant you a tier two powerful reward. We have the Prophecy Dungeon. Completing the two encounters before the boss fight will grant you powerful gear. And completing the encounter by beating the boss will grant you a pinnacle reward. We have the eight gunsmith bounties will grant you a tier one powerful gear. Zavala's, uh, excuse me, Shax's eight bounties will grant you tier one powerful gear. And Zavala's eight bounties will grant you tier one powerful rewards. For Eververse, as we always do, we will start on the first page with the Consecrated Mattergram. Bosses have a chance to drop an upgrade module when defeated. We have Glimmer Shard. Defeated bosses have a chance to create a Shower of Glimmer. We have Scavenger's Boon. Combatants defeated with Precision Final Blows have a chance to drop Planetary Materials. We have Dawn of Invention. Um, okay, okay, I have, I don't, I don't even know what to say. Um, we have Callisto Lancer, which is a pretty okay looking ship. We have Sterling Arbor Projection. A nice little tree there. We have the Welded Brass Shader. It's very uh, purple and brownish with some black in there. That's, that's kind of interesting. Or maybe that's, no, that's, that's purple. Okay. And moving on to the seasonal offerings. Again, this is everything for this season, but it is for bright dust. I mean, excuse me, for silver. So remember to keep that in mind. If you do not have any of these and you would like to acquire them, it does cost real money. Next up, we have the archives, which is everything Eververse has sold previously. If you do not have any of these and want to pick these up, again, these are also for silver, not bright dust. We're going to move on to the bright dust section. First up, we have the Lion Garden Shell. And it's basically just a lion head on a shell. It's still kind of cool looking. The perks are Banshee's favorite. Generate gunsmith telemetry data on any elemental weapon kill at an increased rate. Very nice. As Guiding Light, all XP gains increase by 10%, which is a very good perk to have. And you have a random mod. Moving on, we have the Rim Skipper Sling. And uh, it's definitely a bug looking ship if that is your thing you can add that to your collection we have commanding star shell which is extremely simplistic with a uh, actually two random mods on it next up we have wacky inflation okay I'm gonna I'm gonna have to get this one that that's actually too funny oh my god all right, we have the Intrepid Discovery Grips, which are probably the most boring arms I've ever seen. All right, moving on, we have the Peacebringer ornament for the Deathbringer Exotic Rocket Launcher. That's actually really cool looking. It's just too bad nobody uses this rocket launcher anymore. Oh well. We have Emperor Callus's Projection. Yep, that'll give you nightmares. We're gonna move on from that. We have illicit transmat effects. That's pretty cool. We have only the finest transmat effect. Yeah, don't really get that one, but okay. We have a guiding light transmat effect. 
Yep, just look like fairy dust. We have Vibrant Medusa. Oh, it almost burns your eyes. Oh, maybe that's where the Medusa comes from because if you look at it, you turn the stone. Ah, gotcha, Bungie. You have Iridescent Coral, which is another extremely bright one, but if you are into cotton candy themes, there you go. We have Oiled Gunmetal. It's a very dark brown, iridescent type shader. Very interesting. And lastly, we have Bruised Blush. <sighs> yep, there's... Uh, I don't even know who this is for, but good luck with this one. Alrighty, and that is going to do it for this video, guys. We definitely appreciate you all stopping by and checking out the weekly reset video. We will see you guys back here again for the Where Is Zer video on Friday. But for now, that is going to do it for us. So we will holler at you guys later. Peace.